Hello everyone and welcome back to our video classroom here at CSEC Math Tutor. In this lesson, we are going to be spending some time looking at Pythagoras' theorem. And we have two simple objectives. These are just to describe Pythagoras' theorem and two, to use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate lengths. First, we need to talk though about the right angled triangle because importantly, Pythagoras' theorem only works on right-angled triangles. So let us remind ourselves what a right-angled triangle is. A right-angled triangle, as you see here, is a triangle that has one angle equal to 90 degrees. It has two sides here that make the right angle. So here are your two sides that make the right angle. And this becomes important later on these two sides that make the right angle. And then we have the other side, which is the longest side of the triangle, naturally, because it's opposite to the right angle. And this longest side is given the name hypotenuse. Hypotenuse meaning longest side in the right angled triangle. So these two sides make the L or make the right angle. And then that's the longest side, which is the slanted side, which is the hypotenuse. The theorem, Pythagoras' theorem, bears the name of a Greek mathematician called Pythagoras, and he was the first person we know of to give a proof for the theorem. But the theorem um, was around long before he gave a proof for it, but um, he bears the name of the theorem, Pythagoras', Pythagoras theorem. You can remember that long before the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids and stuff, they, those guys down there knew of the Pythagorean theorem. However, Pythagoras was the first to give a proof for, of it, our first that we know of. All right, so let's talk about Pythagoras' theorem and how it works. Now, so say we have a right-angled triangle here, this red triangle. This is our right-angled triangle. And say we have a side, which is three units long here. And we have another side here, which is four units long. And then we have another side here, which actually measures five units long. Now, if we should turn this side of three units into a square, then we get a square with nine, um, nine smaller squares. So we have nine here. If we do the same thing with these four units to create unit squares on this side, then we have a square that is four by four, which is 16. And if we do the same thing on this side, which has five here and five here, then we end up with 25 unit squares along this side as well. And what is interesting is that when you add these two sides that make the right angle, that make the L, these two sides that make the L, when you add these two sides in terms of unit squares, so there are 16 here and there are 9 here, and when you add those two sides, voila, you get 25, which is, this, which is the, the number of squares on the other side on the hypotenuse. So we look at it and we say, okay, this side square, which is um, three square, when we square it, three square and four square. When we square these two and add them together, we actually get the hypotenuse square, which is five square. So nine plus 16 equal 25. And so in general, we can write down the Pythagoras theorem as saying a square plus b square equals c square. And remember, a and b are the sides that make the right angle, the sides that make the L here. Of course, the orientation may change, so it's better to say the sides that make the right angle. So a square plus b square equals c square. Of course, you could use different letters, but the general idea is that the sum of the two shorter sides or the sides that make the right angle, when you square them and add them, you get the hypotenuse square. Great. Now, how do we use this? Remember, it applies only to right-angled triangles. So we can use it to find the hypotenuse or we can use it to find any of the other, other two sides. Let's write down the theorem. It says a square plus b square equals c square. Remember, a and b are the two sides that make the right angle. So we can write it down this way, five square plus 12 square. And here in this case, it gives us x square. So we can multiply these out now, five square is 25 plus 12 square is 144 
and that gives us x square and when we add these two we get 169 and that gives us x square so to find our x then which number multiplied by itself that's what x square means to multiply by itself so which number multiplied by itself gives us 169 we find the answer by taking the square root of both sides so the square root of x square is equal to the square root of 169 therefore x is in this case 13 so this side would be 13 centimeters long 5 12 13 great now let's look at another question here we have a diagram that here we see the a tower which has a height of h and we have the distance from the middle of the tower to another point here which is 36 meters and we have a supporting wire that's running from the top of the tower down to that point and our job is to find this we want to find the height of the tower so this would be your A or B, and here we have them, and this is your hypotenuse. So remember that when you write down the theorem, you must write it in terms of these two sides, the A and the B. So H square, which is our height square, we know, plus um, this side square, 36 square, would be equal to the length of the hypotenuse square, which is 45 square. And we can write these out, h squared plus 36, when you square it, punch that into a calculator, and you would get 1,296, would be equal to 45 squared, which is um, 2,025. So, having this equation, we can solve it by saying h squared is equal to 2025, that's 2025 minus 1296, and therefore h square, doing a bit of subtraction here, gives us 729. Remember to check it on your calculator. And then to find your answer now as to the height, what is the height of this um, tower? We simply say the height is equal to the square root of 729, and that gives us. Um, 27 meters. Now remember, when you're finding square root, there are always two answers, a positive and a negative result in this case. So positive 27 and negative 27. However, when you're finding square roots and your question is related to something tangible, something real, such as height or distance, then we do not use a negative um, square root. So we just use a positive one because they wouldn't, a negative 27 meters wouldn't, wouldn't make any sense. So here, our answer here is 27 meters, that's how tall the thing is from here to here. Now let's look at another one. Um, here we have, let's say for example, this is a, a lawn or some garden or something. Um, a lawn is a nice thing. I used to get into trouble with um, things like these. For example, um, back at school, they had these nice rectangular lawns. And I, being lazy, wanting to get from one end of the lawn to another one, would simply walk across. No, um, that wasn't um, a nice thing for the persons who took care of the lawns and the administrators. But then <laughs> I wanted to find the fastest way across, so I would just walk what we call walk the hypotenuse. Now, this is a rectangle. <clears throat> And this rectangle here has what we call diagonals. This is a diagonal, it connects two ends, two corners, two vertices. So we have that, and we want to find the length of the diagonal here. Now remember, since it's a rectangle, then it has, it has right angles at each corner. And what we can do is to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of PR. PR here would be our hypotenuse. So remember the theorem. A square plus B square equals C square. And our A and B are the sides that make the right angle. That's this and this. And so we could write it now as 4 square plus 10 square equal to PR square because PR is the, the diagonal. So if, for example, you are playing a race with somebody and that person is going to run from this end along the diagonal to R, from P to R, and then you are going to run from P to S and then S to R. Um, this person running from P to R would actually run a much shorter distance than you running here. But let's find it and show it. So 4416 plus 100 
10 squared is 100, is equal to PR squared. And so we add these two, we get 116 equal PR squared. And so now we find our, our square root, and therefore PR would be equal to the square root of 116. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get approximately 10.77 which you can round off to about 10.8 uh, meters. So the distance from P to R would be 10.8 meters. So if you're running a race and you're trying to save time or you're being lazy and not wanting to walk around the whole quadrangle and you want to go across, <clears throat> then walking from P to R would be 10.8 meters as opposed to walking from P to S and then S to R, which is 10 plus 4, 14 meters, which is way longer. So um, this is another way in which you can use Pythagoras' theorem um, to find the, the diagonal of a rectangle. We can also use it to find the height of a triangle or the height of an equilateral triangle or the height of an isosceles triangle. Now, um, here we have an isosceles triangle. Both of these sides are 10. We want to find the height here. This side here is 12. And so we can use Pythagoras' theorem again. Remember, a square plus b square equals c square. One of the best ways to remember formula is simply to write it down as you use it. And here, since we want the height, notice that this side is 12. But this line here that drops from the top of the triangle, we call it the apex, it drops from the top to this side. It has the property that it cuts this side in two. Equal, equal pieces. So this whole thing is 12. So it's going to cut it in 6 and 6. And so here you have a triangle now, which is, um, which is 6 on the base. If we want to call it base. Okay, let's do that. That's our triangle. So it's 6 here. It is H here. And it is 10 here. And so we can find our... Height now by using Pythagoras' theorem. Remember, you start with the two sides that make the right angle. So you would have h square plus 6 square equal 10 square. So h square plus 36 gives you 100. And therefore, having this equation, we can subtract 36 from, from both sides. h square will be equal to 100 minus 36. h square is therefore equal to 64. And once we find the square root there, the square root of 64 is 8. So we're going to have a height of 8 centimeters here. That's how we use Pythagoras. It is a very, very useful theorem, and it can help us to calculate distances, help us to calculate um, lengths, etc. And it's very useful, especially in um, trigonometry when you're working out um, how to find our other sides of the triangle, whether we're talking about opposites and adjacent. So it's very useful for that as well. Um, <clears throat> remember that you can find more practice material at the website, csecmathtutor.com. Look in the practice and past paper sections and you will find them. And as usual, continue to work hard. Remember to share this video with somebody who needs to understand the topic or just to sit down with that person yourself and share your understanding of the topic. Sometimes it needs a personal touch for somebody to grasp something. And so please, if you haven't subscribed already, remember to do so. And thank you very much for watching. Until next